Are you ready? Mike Ness. The days of wine and roses were a long time ago. The prom stays cruising. Hello and welcome to the third and final part of this Woodstock 99 review. First up on the West Stage is Mike Ness, social distortion frontman. Saturday night would have been crazy for many years, and I'm sure this was a nice hangover tour. People, there's some bad brown acid going around out there. If you start to feel strange, grab a hold of your neighbor and kindly beat the shit out of them. No, that's not true. I don't want to encourage drugs. I wrote a song about the perils of life as a junkie. I wanted to write a song which show which way the wind really blew. None of this William Burroughs glamorizing shit. I sold my soul to the devil. Then I stole Old country vibes. I do get what he's trying to do here. This next song is written by a man I grew up listening to who inspired me just as much as Sid Vicious did. The music is really cool and on record I'm sure it's great but um, unfortunately the bass here is slightly out of tune which does affect it for me. But on the whole I did very much enjoy this set. Actually this proves in a way why 30 minute sets are pointless because it took the band 30 minutes to really get going. The crowd didn't really seem too bothered by it, unfortunately. I thought it was a good set. For me, Mike Ness gets 3.5. Hold on, folks. See right here. What's your name? This is Todd. Say hi to Todd. And, and what's your name? This is Dawn. Todd wants to talk to Dawn. Dawn, for two and a half years, I've known you're my soulmate. I want to tell you in front of the world, in front of God and everybody, I want to spend the rest of my life with you for eternity. Will you do me the honor of being my wife? Yes! Come on, a big hand! Look at it! <laughs> oh man. Are we ready? Canada. Columbia recording artist, Our Lady Peace. Kind of a post grunge, alternative rock kind of vibe. The first song sounds a bit off, but they do get into it uh, by the second song. They can rock at times. The vocalist has a good voice, but it might be in a quiet case. I do enjoy some of the more melodic riffs. Oh. Very good drummer. Till you 
brag Happy cause you smile But doesn't anybody Probably a lot better if you know the songs, but I'm finding it quite hard to get excited by this. And I'd give them 3 out of 5. Next up is Rusted Root. Lots of different instruments on display here. This festival is still about peace. This festival is still about freedom. And we love you very much. Very much Woodstock vibes. But no one listened to me. And a variety of world music influences are coming through as well. Very good percussion section. Great vocals. Very well drilled unit and very professional. Possibly self-indulgent at times, but it's probably up to the individual. And on the whole, the songs are very cohesive and well written. Overall 3.75 out of 5. You always get what you want. With heavy rock being all the rage, literally, by 1999, several of those heavy bands allegedly set the stage for many problems at that year's festival. While the causes of the riots are still up for debate, one legendary performance was lost. Seven Dust was performing at the other end of the main stage on what effectively was 1B. Drummer Morgan Rose talked about the mindset going into Woodstock 99. All we were thinking about really was this is one of those defining moments that can make or break your career. And we were warned, if you go up there and you fail in front of 170,000 people just that are in the crowd, forget the, vid, you know, the actual you know, documentation of it, your career could be done. On the other hand, if you crush it, you could write your ticket. And everyone was asleep, it was like eight or nine in the morning. And uh, I was just walking around, I'm walking around Woodstock. And uh, I was just like looking around going, this is crazy, man, I'm gonna play Woodstock today. And then we started playing, and the minute we started playing, you started seeing over this hill, it was coming. It looked like a bomb had gone off. It, it was Jewel playing on the other stage, 
and then when we started, all the people, you know, bolted on her and came over to us. So can I say good evening, Woodstock 99? They said it's the last day of Woodstock. So I wanted to make sure we did something real important. Here in New York City, let us see what you have, and we'll let you see what we have. So fuck it, what's up all no one listens If we want us Left or right Okay, my boys in the pit I need you to create a real slow world for them Stop. Let's see what you got. Fuck it, go with that kid, fuck, fuck. This is the thing with a joke, cut the interaction. They put the fun into me, yes. Now I'm doing what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you people in Woodstock like to get high? The talk for a while was you guys just put on a Green Day or Nine Inch Nails type of concert at Woodstock. In one minute, it was taken away from us because everybody wanted to burn the place down. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! I don't think they want us to come, so watch this! Are you ready? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is actually the first metal band on the West stage. Vocalist is very good, both harsh and clean vocals. The shirt the guitarists are wearing is quite funny to me. It's the most 90s shirt they could have picked. The band are really intense actually and they're playing with purpose. The songwriting isn't always the best and I think the vocalist does kind of carry them. But the crowd does respond to them well and it works for a festival. When I close my eyes, I see no colour. Do you understand what I'm saying, y'all? That's beautiful energy, y'all. We can feel you. Can you fucking feel us? They say they had to cancel some Van's Warped Tour dates to be here. It seems like they really, really did appreciate being here. Not the right time, y'all! They say I'm different, but well, I'm not the same! The front man does have a great presence. So I feel like we have some friends at Woodstock, y'all. As far as Seven Dust is concerned, this could possibly be the best thing that has ever happened for us, yo. I want to see every fucking plastic bottle as high as it is that we can possibly see them. Three point five out of five. I can't to be Don't be Stop it! Stop it! Woodstock '99. Thank you for a beautiful experience.
collective soul. Perfectly solid rock set. The vocalist is kind of hot and cold for me. Uh, some songs are better than others. The sound goes between post grunge, stadium rock, and alternative rock. Very solid overall. Some songs remind me of Velvet Revolver, would have been better around that kind of time. Overall 3.25. And your penultimate West Stage band, Godsmack. They do play tight here. The songs are pretty well written and they do have a purpose to them. This is on the more heavier side of post grunge that's cropping up around this time. A scene which culturally merged with new metal. Despite being well written, it can be quite boring. The times are quite derivative. The drum is very good here, I've got to say. Um, if you like this band, it was probably a good, you know, really good set. Um, if you don't, it's not really so much. This is my opinion, and um, overall, God's Mac gets 2.5. Annual Sunday night. 
West Stage headliner. Megadeth. Playing with purpose here, and Dave Mustaine sounds fantastic. Probably the best that I've ever heard him sound vocally. And it gives me chills at times. Marty's playing fantastic as well. Extremely intense performance. Very high level of musicianship. Those are the fires from the E stage. Dave Mustaine, check this out. Here's something we hope you really like. Now what if I think it sucks? Save that for later. They kept looking towards the left, which his left, which is the camping area, and the East Stage would have been to his right. Yeah, the media said that metal fans caused the fires, but um, metal fans are here watching Megadeth causing no problems at all. The fires are from Chili Peppers fast. Not every song is a winner for me, but um, on the whole, this is a fantastic concert, either way. The 
the virtuoso level performance from everybody involved. dedicate this song to somebody who was a member of Megadeth who recently died. I don't know if you know this or not, but our first drummer, Gar Samuelson, died on uh, July 14th, and we'd like to dedicate this song to Love and Remembrance for Gar, okay? So those of you that had a chance to see Gar play with us, or those of you that knew him, you're really lucky he was a great guy, and uh, we're going to miss you, Gar. I was a bit gutted though we didn't get Hangar 18 at the airbase, but there you go. 4.5 out of 5. The West Stage concludes with a pretty good day. But I feel Megadeth were by far the standout act of the day. Whiskey River, take my mind. Don't let her memory torture me. Now we're going to go back in time before the fires. Do it. Oh, I guess that I'm doing fine. Probably a nice way to start the day. And how's your new love? Well, I hope that he's doing fine. Something like this that he smiles after basically every line. It's very infectious. That you love him till the end of time. Beat up old guitar there. The music gives me a very warm feeling. It feels very genuine to me. It might take a while to acclimatise to the country sound if you're not really into that. Enough songs here that people will recognize. A nice peaceful moment at Woodstock. Thank you very much. Before we get out of here, we want to do a little tribute to our pal Towns Van Zandt and also Haggard, one called Poncho and Lefty. Poncho was a bandit boys. His horse was fast as polished steel. But Poncho met his match, you know, in the deserts down in... Country isn't always challenging. It doesn't have to be. Enough influences here to keep it interesting. As I said, there's a very warm and genuine feeling to the music. Four out of five. He only did what he had to do. Next up is the Brian Sex Orchestra. Let's go! This guy can definitely play. This whole band can, really. Sleepwalk sounded fantastic here. Straight cat. 
Opera, the set has a nice mixture of jazz and blues styles. I, I should ride by with my tail in the air. Jay Castro, I'm a lady's cat. I'm a feline Casanova, that's that. Enough recognisable songs to keep the fans interested. Occasionally the set fell kind of flat, but the musicianship and the recognisable songs I think helped see the set through for sure. He's a good front man as well. Three point five out of five. Next up, Everlast. The live band with the double bass, which I didn't really expect. The first song did sound like a complete mess to me. I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but. I do you get what he's trying to do here? And I feel as if it might sound good on record. We were trying to figure out what to do at Woodstock, what embodied the true idea of Woodstock, and we couldn't think of anybody finer than Mr. Marvin Gaye. So, now, I ain't trying to say I could even sing nowhere near like him, but this is our version of a song called Trouble Man. Yeah, I come up hard, but this cover was actually really cool. But that's okay. Cause trouble man, don't get in my way. Yeah, I've been some places and I see some faces. I got the connections, they take my directions. When people say that's okay, they don't bother me, no. <laughs> I guess because Wycliffe John nailed Jump Around so well the day before they couldn't really match it so they tried some stupid remix. Didn't work at all. The one thing you could probably rely on in the set to enjoy it. Nope. This part was cool though, I like this cover. Some songs were genuinely really cool. Those moments didn't come often enough for me personally. Two out of five. Hey, never last. What happened to House of Shame, huh? Can't jump around with the fucking homies no more, can ya? Next up is Elvis Costello. This isn't what I was expecting really. I thought there would be a band. Started out just himself, but then a pianist came out. It is entertaining and the music does tell a story. What do you get when you fall in love? Guy with the pen to 
burst your bubble I'll never fall in love again Just explain that this is a new direction. The crowd enjoyed some songs more than others. And we want a really big cheer for my old pal Brian Setu, who lent me one of his guitars to play the rest of the set. I've never wanted to criticise someone for trying a new direction, but I think here would have been a nice place to play your normal kind of set. It is good, but I wouldn't say it's him at his best. Expected more, to be honest. Three out of five. Still a good set. Please welcome Atlantic recording artist Jewel. Please don't say I love you. Comes out a cappella, which is very brave. In part one, I said that JK from Jamiroquai will usually be the best vocalist when he appears at a festival. Definitely rivaled to that crown by Jewel here. Please don't bring me flowers. They only whisper the sweet things you'd say. I got my eggs, I got my pancakes too. It was happy. I was sad. Seems very confident in her ability from the beginning. Outstanding vocal range. Unbelievable. The band are really great too. Top musicians here for sure. I was pretty hooked on this performance, I didn't want it to end really. Easily one of the sets of the festival. An easy 5 out of 5 for me.
Mocking bells are singing, you're a little Your penultimate East Stage band, Creed. My first thought was that the drums are way too loud in the mix. The music does have a very good groove to it. And the guitar player is obviously awesome. The vocals sound quite derivative to me. Also, not the band's fault, but the sound in general here is quite muddy. I'm not his biggest fan, but Scott Stapp does have a good presence. Thirty years ago, at the original Woodstock, this man we're about to introduce decided not to play. We called him up and said, Hey man, Come jam with us. This is Robbie Krieger from The Doors, man. For me, this actually saved the set. Um, I was getting quite bored until he came out. He could mimic Jim Morrison too. Three out of five. Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder joins Creed frontman Scott Stapp for a barbed wire bonanza. Hang on! Isn't it obvious the guy stole my voice? It's so freaking obvious! My voice! Mine! Hey, anybody ever tell you guys you sound alike? Let's get it on! Give me back my voice! <laughs> it's my voice too! I'll kick your ass! Incredible musician. World class vocalist. Five stars. Oh, no, sorry. Wrong tape. All around the world, we can make time. Rubbing in the stomach of the big pop pop. Good God, girl, but with the new year. And your Sunday night. East stage headliner. The Red Hot Chili Peppers. And today and John didn't have the best first song, but they got into it by the second. By the second song, they sounded much tighter. It's actually a really good set list. 
a lot of songs that everybody would know. Not them and their best for me, but it'll be a really fun set to see live though. And sound better the longer the set goes on. Fires have already started. A charity called PAX were distributing candles to people throughout the day with the idea of doing a candle light vigil during the song Under the Bridge. Most people obliged but many people used said candles to start the fires. to feel free and take her shirt off doesn't mean a bunch of you have to go grab her tits and stuff because they're her tits they're not yours only the second person after Dexter from the offspring to mention this Whoa. as you can see if you look behind you we have a bit of a problem chili peppers are going to come back calm down it's not part of the show it really is a problem so the fire department's going to have to come in with a fire truck to put the fire out. So let's back away, let's let the fire department do their job. Holy shit, it's uh, apocalypse now out there. A good God, no doubt for me, treason, believe me. By this point, the band actually sound really good. Look at you, good. Very much at home now. The fan comes on stage to join him.
quite sloppy at times, but I think the set list and the stage presence um, saw them through. Three out of five. And there we have it. We've come to the end of the Woodstock 99 review. Thank you so much for sticking by for this whole thing. If you wish to stick around, I have put together a documentary trying to explain what went down that weekend. None of the views represented in the documentary are my own. Downtown Rome, New York. Woohoo! On to Woodstock 99. The masses are marching towards Rome. 225,000 strong. The summer of 69, a weekend known as Woodstock. It was a time of peace, love, and harmony. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Boy, what a difference 30 years can make. They were hoping it would be a magical mystery tour to a time gone by. Instead, a $150 ticket got them this. I could smell all kinds of smells. Just a, a real rank smell of uh, the feces and the urine and the, just uh, the dirt and filth that had collected. In 69, it was free speech and free love. But in 99, nothing was free. High prices made tempers flare. In this exclusive interview with Real TV, one of the Woodstock originals, David Crosby, says it's not too tough to figure out why this summer fest turned into a slug fest. If you get everybody drunk, charge them six bucks for a bottle of water, then play a bunch of rage, angst, anger, frustration with really violent bands, I don't know why they're surprised it turned out the way it did. Right on. Still, it kind of looks like the old Woodstock. <laughs> Peace and love, right? Well, not if you listen to the security guards. There's going to be mass bedlam here. Insanity. It, is. it really is. Come on, Woodstock! Before it all went bad, Woodstock 99 got off to a cheerful start. Awesome. This right here is Woodstock 99 at its finest. <laughs> Everyone's been taking a shower lately and brushing their teeth. It's like, you wouldn't see this, I think, at the first Woodstock. I think it's the first Woodstock. I think they're like, just basically really free, but we're like, different generation. Here to party, 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 party. Best music, you know, is silence. As well as the main stages, there was also an emerging artist stage, featuring artists such as Muse. By night, though, it would change its name to Hangar 100, featuring DJs such as Moby and Fat Boy Slim. In addition to hot new groups, Hangar 100 also hosted performances by crowd favorites George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic, as well as John Entwistle, bass player for The Who and veteran of the very first Woodstock concert in 1969. As the show progressed, concert attendees and staff alike worked and played hard as they enjoyed incredible live music all day and danced all night at the massive rave parties held at where else? Hangar 100.
Top named acts such as Moby and Fatboy Slim join forces with the world's best DJs to keep tens of thousands of fans dancing until sunrise. Things soon turn sour. Excuses for the boorish behavior were far more abundant than the venue's minimal amenities, like free water or toilets. The shit's coming out of the seats. I mean, that's, that shouldn't be for us. There was the oppressive heat, the ugliness of Griffiths Air Force Base, and of course, the high prices for food and drink. You know, at this point, people were so broke and so out of it, they didn't give it. We woke up one morning, there was no damn water for like half a day, man. I mean, everybody was bumming and shit was hot as hell. And I'll excuse my language, but there were like no water, man. It was like they're trying to kill us in here. There was a lot of frustration about $10 burritos, you know, and $5 hot dogs, things like that. So that's what we were catching when people were coming by. They were throwing bottles at the vendors and, you know, f you, f Woodstock, f Michael Lang. And so that kind of, you know, did it. The temperature hit triple digits and the crowd was feeling it. It was a nightmare. It was over 100 degrees. There's no shade. All the food, souvenirs, everything was way overpriced. We didn't get water, was, you had to buy it, and the ATM was out of money, and the line for the ATM was hours long anyway. I've seen marijuana, I've seen um, LSD, I've seen um, like shrooms, coke, you know, alcohol, of course. Solo on the people blamed moshing culture on the riots. So now we're going to take a look at what moshing is and how it might have affected what happened at Woodstock. It gets us off on stage to see that crowd just going whack like that and we start going off even harder. If your music's really good, they'll mosh to it. Get in the pit and try to love someone! For veteran moshers, there's a set of unspoken rules that governs pit behavior. It's about mosh pit etiquette. You know, don't do anything to anybody else in the pit that you wouldn't want done to yourself. If you are in the pit trying to love someone, I bang, knock somebody down, help them back up. If you were 106 pounds, you could jump from the second speaker. If you were my weight, you don't do that, because that's the etiquette, because you don't want to kill anybody. And some musicians say they feel no need for traditional mosh pit addicts. I don't have a problem with people just sitting in their seats all night, enjoying me, watching me, watching me rock out. You know, I don't need a pit or a crowd participation to boost my ego anymore. I do a fine job of boosting my own ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, it's lost something. But to the kids who are going to see Blink-182 now at a show and going crazy, it's a whole new thing for them. But really, they haven't lost anything. They get to go to a show and, and have a ball. And that's awesome. Moshers may outgrow the pit in the normal course of growing up, but as long as there's a new generation of young fans eager to vent their adrenaline, the moshing spirit, at least, will probably always be with us. That's what it is. It brings people together. How can you go to a metal show and not mosh? When I get up and I look in the mirror and I got a bunch of lumps on my head, I did had a good day. By 1997, the peaceable, hippie-esque Lollapalooza vibe was being supplanted by a darker, new metal mood. Along with this ominous new music came a change in the character of the mosh pit. When I see what goes on in the pit now, it's just like what it was 10 years ago, it's, it's certainly kicked up a notch. We started out doing the wave, and then somebody gets a little more violent, and then the other guy gets a little more violent, and the next thing you know, there's a full-scale riot going on down there. Concert med tent doctors saw this violent new moshing scene develop firsthand. Typically, we see a lot of minor contusions to the head. I crowd surfed before, and I, like, fell on my head. Woo! The guy jumped up on the stage for his two seconds of fame, you know, and then jumped down again, and he caught this chick right in the face. She was just standing there with her boyfriend watching it and he kicked his teeth all over her boyfriend's shirt. 
Fucked one girl, broke her nose open in a club. One guy blew his knee out. We had a girl lose a finger at a show. See this guy with his arm, his elbow is completely going the wrong direction and the bone is sticking out and he's bleeding and he's just going, <laughs> best thing I've ever done in my life. You're looking out at the crowd and just be going like, geez, people like, must be getting killed out there. Despite the increasing risk of getting down in the pit, young women continued wanting to take part. A lot of times the people who are rocking the hardest in the pit are girls. That's where the excitement is. You don't get any better than the pit. It was awesome. My ribs are killing me, though. The women also faced moshing problems that were specifically their own. There's usually two types of people. There's the kind of guys who are like there to protect you and they don't want to hurt you. And then there's always like sadistic people. I'll stop and say, what the f you know, do you have a sister? How would you like that to be your sister? What would you do if your buddy did that to your sister? How would that make you feel? The vile new mosh pit behavior of the post Lollapalooza period surfaced most unforgettably and appallingly at the notorious Woodstock 99 festival. Woodstock 99 was hyped as another peace, love, and music affair along the lines of the original festival 30 years earlier. Woodstock 99, yeah, I love ya! We're enjoying the peace, love, and happiness. By Friday night, the peaceful vibe was waning as new metal heroes Korn came on to get the crowd moshing. Bloodthirsty maniacs trying to kill me. And I had a freaking good time, too. Woo! That's right! Ah! See that? That's what Korn does when they come. By Saturday night, Woodstock 99 had become a very different and much darker experience. Mosh pits are open up everywhere. It's crazy, crazy energy running through the whole entire crowd. Woodstock, man, it was awesome. That was one of the biggest moments for me ever. Can't wait to get up there and tear things up for everybody. When you can get on stage and not see the end of people, that's cool. It seems like everybody was just having a great time. From where we were, everybody was hopping, having a great time, and that's all we saw. We're 25 feet up in the air, <laughs> separated from everyone. There's a sea of people. And we had sound difficulties, but from what we looked, saw, it looked like everyone was having an amazing time. Yeah. You have no idea that there was anything negative happening. one of those days! The heat burned on and conditions grew more intolerable. And for some angry concertgoers, songs like Limp Bizkit's Break Stuff became a mantra. Time to reach deep down inside. Take all that negative energy. I see these people surfing this plywood and I was like, that is cool. I want to do that. I want to get on there and have them let me surf across the crowd. And I thought it was awesome until I heard that it wasn't. We got tore down for rocking too hard. Dude, it's not our fault. From what we looked, saw, it looked like everyone was having an amazing time. Yeah. You have no idea that there was anything negative happening. I don't think that we should play in front of that many people again. Woodstock 1999! I can guarantee you we won't be playing another Woodstock. But alongside the good-natured debauchery, there was an undercurrent of male aggression young women as the all too frequent targets. Just because a girl wants to go crowd surfing or whatever, that doesn't give the guys the right to molest them, you know what I'm saying? Woodstock mosh pits also subjected women to unfettered groping and several reported instances of rape. Woodstock 99, yeah, the, the mosh pit was not just a crime scene, but a well-documented crime scene. Here's a report from shortly after the festival in 1999 in which a police captain was quoted as saying they were investigating multiple violent attacks against women Three were in the campground area, another was in front of the stage while Limp Biscuit was playing. Wood says the woman from Pittsburgh had been body surfing, hoisted into the air, and passed around above the crowd and fell into the mosh pit. As a woman, it made me feel very nervous and uncomfortable. It was disgusting. I was molested, and I hate all men now. And you would do it again? Of course. I think women got themselves in situations they couldn't handle. They didn't realize what they were getting into. In the wake of, of this most recent Woodstock, 
it's not possible to see a mosh pit or to see a crowd behaving that violently and not feel kind of creeped out and nervous about it. Woodstock 99 was an ominous warning. Following that now infamous event, many bands began to realize that they'd have to be ready to cool out the crowds at their concert. You guys are f***ing up the whole show. You gotta like try and take responsibility, go out, say something to the crowd, calm them down. In the end though, curbing concert violence is mainly a job for security professionals, not musicians. It's the job of the band to get the crowd riled yeah. up. I mean, that's why we're all there. And it's, it's security's job to make sure they have a controlled situation. This is not a boxing match. Uh, there were a few of them got carried away in there, and uh, we talked to them outside. Those guys are actually unsung heroes in a lot of ways. But who's ultimately responsible for fending off those mosh pit dangers that remain? When you go to a show like this, you gotta look out for yourself and all the people that you're with and anybody that's at the show with you. We might love it, but I'm telling you, all you marshals, be careful. There's some brothers out there that don't know what marshal means. And when you bump into them like that, it's on. I mean, I done seen a couple of guys out there get in the marsh pit and start marshing like they're crazy and then they get beat up, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you don't get jumped on when you out there marshing. For real. But do high prices and poor conditions lead to this? Please. Unavoidably, the focus returned to the audience itself and the axe. Dude, it's not our fault. That's all I can say. Give me some to drink. Many in attendance would cite the set by Limp Biscuit as the moment when the festival's vibe turned from fun to fearsome. Well, I don't think they should have had people like Limp Biscuit here when it's we're promoting peace and he gets up there and says, peace. They can't have Limp Biscuit and then they come out and say, all right, the crowd's gonna calm down. And then they have Raging Against the Machine come out. All right, you guys gotta calm down. And then Metallica come out. You can't do that. There's too many crazy people around here on drugs. We have peace, love, and happiness with this lineup. Limp Bizkit, Metallica, Rage Against the Machine. Oh! There ain't no peace and love there. How scary was it for you up there when they started ripping that place apart and they started taking the plywood off the towers and stuff? Oh God. Dude, it's not our fault. Or do you say the weekend went relatively smoothly before tonight? The stages are gorgeous, the wall is being uh, fine-tuned. The... And the reports that I'm getting and all of my observations are that we're off to a wonderful start. As best as we know, it is under control. Um, and um, it's about all I know. Holy uh, apocalypse now out there. I remember that day pulling into the to the grounds and it was disgusting. You know, it was like those shit everywhere and it was piss everywhere and people were sleeping in their own defecation. It was just awful. That was a uh, that was a like a ticking time bomb for everybody around. It was for the crowd it was, for us it was. But by the time the Red Hot Chili Peppers close out the concert, the mood turns nasty. The last band that was heavy to play was the Chili Peppers. That's when they really started to destroy everything. They started getting very, very rowdy when we were playing, and then within hours that place was on fire. Fans were growing unruly. Then, on the final night, a peace group called PAX distributed candles for a vigil during the Red Hot Chili Pepper set, and all hell broke loose. Yeah, throwing stuff at the buses and ripping everything apart, and they had, you know, we were guarded by cop cars and SWAT cars getting us off the, the premises. After concert goers started bonfires, the Red Hot Chili Peppers unwisely chose to cover Jimi Hendrix's fire. No deaths were recorded, but there were plenty of injuries and even some arrests. Red Hot Chili Peppers was fun for a while, but you can see that the concert was not over. Everybody's leaving because the place is fucking burning down. This is a very dangerous situation. Everyone is trying to get out of here. Yes. I think we're going to go. When the fire started, the show stopped. The concert was stopped moments ago, so fire trucks could get in. Small bonfires at first grew into out of control blazes. Soon, the concert goers were out of control too. Everyone set everything that was flammable in sight on fire. The scariest thing that's happened all weekend is a fire that's broken out by the main stage. It is raging over there. Hendrix plays while Rome burns. The fires and the chaos brought hundreds of state police to the scene. Get down, the riot police are coming. 
They found fans feeding and fleeing the fires. Everybody wants to get nuts, everybody wants to get crazy, and uh, they just got a little out of hand and started pulling down the walls around the speaker towers. Vandals toppled light stands and speakers. They destroyed tents and booths and set fire to a dozen parked tractor trailers. Why they started the fires is still unknown. Hey, Woodstock 99, years from now, and all most people may remember, is the night of arson and looting that ended an otherwise happy time. We're live in Rome, New York, with CBS News correspondent Sam Litzinger. Most of Woodstock 99 will go into the musical memories a lot of fun, but the last few moments of it won't. Some of the concert goers started fires just as the festival was ending, and some of the fires may have been started by peace candles given to the crowd. This young man who was in the audience blames gate crashers for causing problems. If you get, if you got a ton of people coming in with beer, and they're getting in for free, and they're already drunk, and they just got in for free, so they're just hooting and hollering, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Could be 150, 200,000 people here. This is a very dangerous situation. Everyone is trying to get out of here. We are going to get out of here. Too. I have a question for you. Eileen said that there wasn't any violence per se, but I mean, the, the damage to the trucks, is that not violence in your eyes? Uh, it depends on how you would uh, define all of that. Uh, certainly, it was demolition. It's the end of the world as we know it. But certainly, looking at a uh, news truck here with uh, five to ten thousand dollars worth of damage to it. One might call that uh, violence in the way. Fires blaze across the site. Woodstock officials spread the word. All vendors shut down now. Steve's gone to hide the cash. Right when I said, I think that's a fire, they were, we were cleaning up, so let's prepare for the worst. Man, do it. No, no, don't give me money now. No? no, I will get your address. I will send you mail. I don't want to take your money now. Yeah, my t-shirts. Probably like a twenty-dollar fucking value box of them. How much did you pay for them? Free. Jackets. Free. Nothing. Condoms everywhere. Straight. Here we go. Back up. Look at that. Let me out of here. Oh my god. See these fucking these poor vendors, man. Yeah. All their stuff. It's pretty disgusting. I can't believe that people would uh, wreck a place like this. The uh, absolute weirdest thing I saw was the fact that over there, about 40 yards or so, was uh, four ATM machines, and they managed to disappear in under two minutes. First, I was afraid for the stuff. I was afraid for the um, all the merchandise. I thought it, I was afraid it was going to get stolen. Um, then I was just afraid. I, I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want anybody I was with to get hurt. And it really bothered me because this is supposed to be about peace, and it was destruction for no reason. People are screaming, crying, screaming people's names, looking for people. They didn't know where to go, who to look for. Very confused, very chaotic. A mob is rampaging. <laughs> Vendor tents torched. The cops are driving all the people back into the campground so they can get away from the fire. So everybody's just messing around there. So they're gonna flood this area. It's scary. There's still lots of product inside the mode robes tent. Move it! The melee lasts for hours. We're just wait to see what happens. The mode robes gang stand guard all night. Uh, we were just afraid that we were gonna get hurt. We we had um. We all had pipes and stuff trying to protect ourselves because we didn't know what was going to happen. It started off uh, with just a few bonfires in, in the garbage cans, and then before we knew it, the stage was uh, part of the stage was on fire, and, and then the tractor trailers, and then explosions. And Cops were called to the scene to clear the house. In the end, they tallied eight rapes and sexual assaults, 44 arrests, one in 20 fans injured, and millions of dollars in damage. By dawn, the worst is over. Hey, we're still Concert promoters were at a loss as to what went wrong. I can't give you an explanation. I guess there were just kids some blowing off some steam, but it got out of hand. In this case, my sense is that it was a mistake that these kids did not intend to do what happened. But it did. What all really happened this weekend at Woodstock? Well, for one, thousands of people were treated for heat exhaustion. Catherine, I know that they had hired a security team or system. Where were they last night when all of this was going on? Do you know anything about that? 
Well, last night we talked to one security officer off camera and he said that there were rumors that crowds were going to get a little bit rowdy last night. So a few hundred, a hundred of them left early yesterday afternoon. That, uh, it's just some rumors, just some hearsay that some security officers did leave, but we didn't see any around here when we were around roaming around the area. And that's when a lot of the fires th did start. Most concert goers fled when the commotion broke out, but Monday a few remained behind assessing the peace concert's damage. I just feel, I feel awful for the people that have to clean it up. It was like six fires out there and one, one fire truck. I mean, you got 250,000 people out here. You should count on stuff like that, you know? Count on there being fires and stuff. Count for the worst, and they didn't do that. One group of people just started going, and it just escalated into another group, another group. They were down there beating on drums. It sounded like a freaking, like a jungle, like a tribe, jumping all over the place, lighting everything on fire. It was crazy. They ruined a good thing. People were waking me up and saying, get up, you're going to blow up. And I look over and see this damn thing on fire. I was just like, wow, man. I'm so outraged that I was even in this. I am I came here to watch music. I didn't come here to fear for my life because a bunch of psychos started uh, setting tractor trailers on fire and like the propane tanks are exploding. That's ridiculous. I got this tattoo about Thursday night around 1230. And I got it here. It something to remember it by. And... Now it should say Woodstock Riot 99 instead of just Woodstock 99. I don't see how they're ever going to throw anything like this ever again. It's just a lot of people ruined it. Ruined it. I don't... It just makes me sad, man. Even before the rubble stopped smoldering, the explanations had begun for the mayhem and destruction that had finished off Woodstock 99. This Woodstock was all about money. Who knows, there was so much ecstasy and acid and everything else flowing, who knows what the mentality, it's, it's a lack of mentality. Others left behind a wall of trash art. It seems to replace the murals that were torn down to feed the fires. Their message, a new symbol for Woodstock, dollar signs instead of peace signs. Now, commercialism, that's what some people say led to the fall of Woodstock 99. The vendors were selling water for $4. However, I hear that was mandated. I mean, the kids were hungry, they were thirsty, they were hot. Some Woodstock 99ers seemed like aggros without a cause. Yes? I'm sick of the Backstreet Boys on MTV Live. I'm sick of that. <laughs> you know, it's both. Don't hold back on me. I'm not holding back. I hate that. Bands like Biscuit seem to market anger to a young male audience affluent enough to spend $155 for a concert ticket. But were these people really angry? It's hard to really know. This was pathetic at the very least. Thank God um, no one got seriously hurt. Uh, no permanent damage to any real buildings, but it's, it's, it's inexcusable the behavior of these couple hundred knuckleheads. Why would any of the hippies from 69 come here? You know, what, there's five hippies here. You know, it's like, it's, it's a new era. You know, America got to wake up, you know, again. We woke up in the 60s. Now we're, now we're, we went from tuning up to logging on. I don't know. They forgot how powerful music is. If you play songs of hope and, and love and exaltation of the spirit and questing for knowledge to people, you pull a certain kind of people and you generate a certain kind of vibe. For this moment too. Is this the end of Woodstock? Don't be so sure, it's still a powerful brand name, and there's still money to be made. To have this terribly unfortunate situation, um, blemish, put a, put a permanent blemish on what was accomplished here uh, this weekend. You're right, the mayor of Rome was here and invited us back five years from now. The three uh, producers um, were very optimistic, we were, feeling, we were feeling very positive. Woodstock 99, goodbye and maybe good riddance. I thank you, Lord, for my birth and everything that's followed. I thank you, Lord, for today, and I will pray tomorrow. I thank you, Lord, for the love of my life and a friend. I made a promise, and I'm loving my wife to the end. I thank you, Lord, for your guidance. Cause it's all that counts. And right here, right now, Lord, this is your house. I thank you, Lord, for a dream that came true to life. And 
I ask you to bless everybody that's right here tonight. I don't always do the right thing, and I ask you to forgive me. Because I need you here with me. Without you in my life, it's empty. I think back how some people did me like violence was the remedy. And because I think of them now, I will pray for my enemy. It's not because of what I'll do, but because they don't know. There's something better after here. But everybody, don't go. So I ask you to forgive them. And we'll hope they see. And I thank you for the love that they've given to me. I will not abuse it, nor will I lead them astray. You see, I love them like children that I see every day. And I pray, no, we pray together. You get us through that bad weather, and we'll love you ever. Let your thought and my heart go hand in hand. I first thought, but to start, now I stand a man. And for as long as I can, however long you permit me, please give me the strength I need to live. Bear with me. Since when have you had a girlfriend? We met in the summer of love. Woodstock 99. Quick! I need some water! Eight dollars! <laughs> Not in this lifetime. 